I tell everyone, you need to go to church. It's not only good for your, your soul, like the community, the people that are there. What's a brand? I think it's others' perception of you, right? Uh, but I want to tell people that are listening, like, this studio didn't happen in a day. It didn't happen in a week. This has been four to five years of me, like, busting my butt off. Welcome back to the Investor Unite podcast, where we talk all things real estate, business, and entrepreneurship. If you are looking to ignite your real estate investing, then join us at Investors Unite. And, and on, on today's, today's episode, <laughs> no, on today's episode, we have a special guest. <laughs> Very special. Yeah, our wow. what, like office roomie, or I don't even know <laughs> what you would say, Best roommate. Bud. Yeah, my office ping pong mates. competitor. Yeah, <laughs> I can beat you once in a while, but you, not. You got me a couple times. Often. <laughs> Pretty good. We that, got Nathan Nearetti. Did I say that right? Neary. Neary. My bad. Hey, Eddie. Hey, Neary. Eddie. No, no, no. This sounds like Italian. Are you Italian? Yes. Oh, nice. Italian. Close to. We'll it. just go with it. Yeah. <laughs> Spaghetti, spaghetti. But you right. have done a lot. You know, you got your real estate license. You've been, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with real estate photography, yep. videography. You know, <clears throat> you name it. In regards to the photography yep. space, you've done it. We've done a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Not just real estate. We've done portraits. We've done commercial work. We've done it all. Yeah, you do headshots. Content. I remember the yeah. one guy came in here a couple days ago. He looked all yeah. professional. He pulled up with his nice ass like Audi RS7. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's like, who's driving that? So I'm plowing out and I started watering a little bit. Yeah. But, he's he's an ex he was an executive of an oil. Oh, some, really? Not oil. A company that creates or sells oil products. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd say anyone who's Engine usually oils. involved with oil has a lot of money. Yeah. I don't know. That's crazy, right? Yeah, That's I don't insane. know. He looked professional. But, but anyways. Yeah. Nate. Yes. I'm so happy Skyler. to have you here. Skyler, it's great to be here. Yeah. It's the only reason Nate's really here is just because I beat him in ping pong. <laughs> he, he, he does not want to do this. It's between me or Ben, so. That's true. And I, we might have Ben chime in as a, a little bit as well. Yeah, and I so. think it's going to be super cool just to get, like, your backstory because we don't haven't had anyone in regards to, like, real estate photography space because this is more so a real estate podcast, but you also have your license. And... I want to hear like the backstory. <laughs> the I want to hear the numbers. Yeah, I want to hear, hear everything. How'd you grow up? How'd you get involved oh. in this? So yeah, yeah. So we can start from the beginning. I actually uh, was born in Mississippi. Not a lot of people know that. I tell people I'm half Southern. I was okay. born in Mississippi. I spent a lot of time in Florida. My wife is from the South. And so I'm half Southern. Half, half <laughs> Southern, half Italian. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, so uh, six six years old, moved to Michigan. My Both of my parents lived and grew up in Michigan. So we were really going back home. Yeah. Uh, spent my childhood there. Love it. Love the North. Uh, it's great. But at 20, I was, no, I was 21. I was like, I got to just need a change of pace, need a change of scenery. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, I had already been going to school for three years at community college mm -hmm. for biology. And I was like, I'll go finish my degree somewhere else. So I went to Florida. <laughs> nice, sunny Florida. Yeah. yeah. I, I pretty much spent all my 20s in Florida. So from 21 to by the time I got married and we moved here, um, I was in Florida. Yeah. So I, I had a that. degree in biology. Yeah, living yeah. the dream out there. Did you ever use it? Like get a job I, with biology? I actually got into clinical research. Okay. I, I got a job at a clinical research facility in St. Pete, Florida. Oh, uh -huh. I was just down there. Yeah. Last year. That's a beautiful area. Yeah. That's great. Um, some yeah, areas, but. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's I great. wandered into that spot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one well, while I was down there, I was just staying with a buddy of mine and he obviously still worked during the entire day. So I just had like nine hours in the beginning of the day to go adventure everywhere. And I got into some bad spots, but then also some beautiful <laughs> yeah, yeah, spots. Yeah. Oh, you go on the water. Like, you know that one water? spot where there's like that giant pier that goes out into the water and they have like the uh the tiki bars up top and everything? Yeah, yeah. Dude, that was so nice. That's that's brand new. So when I lived there, there was the old pier and it was literally an upside down pyramid. Oh that's really? What it looked like. Yeah. That's kinda cool. It was a very classic thing. And when they were you heard they were going to tear it down. Everyone like, oh, no, you can't do that. Because yeah. it was very... It's one of those monuments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. But anyway, uh, lived there for a few years after getting married. And then what brought us to Pennsylvania is I was looking to get something closer to home. It was like, Michigan's just a little too far. Yeah. yeah. Virginia, where my wife is from, a little too far. Um, so I started applying jobs. And then in the midst of this, my wife actually got diagnosed with, with cancer. Oh, no way. Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's something you can get actually pretty young. Um, right at the same time, I got a call from the Cancer Institute in Hershey. Hey, uh, you applied for this job. I'm like, I did? Okay. 
Can you come <laughs> you for an interview? I, I don't even <laughs> remember doing. He was just applying yeah. left and right. <laughs> and it, yeah, I, I guess so. So made a drive up here. Long story short, I got the job offer, and I, I took that as a sign from God. Yeah. That hey, you guys need to go to Pennsylvania. I'm like that's it's just as clear a sign I've ever had. Probably yeah. From like his plan for us. I was so. gonna say if Virginia's too far. Then how'd you get here? But that makes sense now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So. We moved. My wife started cancer treatments. Uh, she did four months of chemo, cancer free. Uh, Let's go. For over 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Clap that one up. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, that's awesome. That's how we ended up here. I did, um, I worked at the Cancer Institute for three years. And then I've always been entrepreneurial. Yeah. I've always been do it your, do it your, on your own, just, just hustle and do like create something. I've always been a creator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, I was sitting at a nine to five job, not liking what I was doing, and I was just burning inside to start something. So the first business I started when I moved to PA was a hammock business. Oh uh, yeah, you brought that one. I up. have a hammock. What, the hammock in here. Yeah. You probably can't see it on camera. Tell me uh, why I was about to turn this. Be like, look. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the ones I've, I've made. I taught myself to sew. I bought sewing machines. And what year was this? Oh man, this was probably actually not far, not long after we moved here, 2016 ish. Okay. So yeah, not too long. 2017. Ago. I actually fell in love with the Appalachian Trail. Mm. A buddy of mine that I worked with at the, the hospital, uh, we started section hiking together, and I was like, I want to start making hammocks and selling them because that's what I started sleeping on yeah. and on yep. the trail. And so. Would I you spend a, like days out there at a time? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I still do it. At least we try to at least do it once a year now. Yeah. That's good. We're so busy, but. Uh, did that. I learned a lot about business doing, doing that. Um, not super successful in it, but I've, I did ship hammocks all across the country, even ac wow. some across to England. Can you make like a custom pretty... Investor Unite hammock? That'd be sick. I could. You still have like the machines for it? Not, I mean, I, no. I mean, <laughs> I have a sewing machine still, but yeah. to get everything out and try to find out everything yeah. is would be kind of difficult, but. Nah, don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of cool though. So, yeah. how long did you have that business running for? for almost three years. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Then I decided to get into real estate. So this is where real estate comes in. Dun dun dun. I don't know. I don't know exactly what sparked it, but I've always been fascinated with real estate and seeing people really build wealth through it. And I was like, yeah. okay, yeah. well, maybe I just get my license and then leave the cancer institute and start selling. Right. And that's just, a ballsy move. <laughs> it was. It was. Oh my gosh! Especially yeah. having a newborn. Right. Like I'm thinking my daughter was born for, in 2016. Yeah, so. working for a cancer institute, like you're probably making decent money over there too. No, not really. <laughs> not really. That's surprising. I know. It, I know. It does sound surprising, but I wasn't very seniority. I wouldn't have a lot of. Yeah, it kind of takes a while to build your you have way to up be, there. Yeah, you have to be somewhere for a long time, and that's another thing. I was like, I don't want to be wasting yeah. years of my life here, right? For something I'm not really too passionate about. In. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was interested in real estate. I I did all the studying, took the classes, got my license. First try, I thought I was going to fail the the state portion. Oh, yeah. I knew. I was like, I'm going to have to take this again. I just inked it out, squeaked it out. Yeah. Barely made it. No way. Good yeah. job. That's so, how I was. First try. Yeah. Oh, man. I couldn't. I like, it actually that like one point or something. I, yeah, I'm not a, I am not good at tests. No. I mean, so. it's so tricky. The questions are a little bit tricky where one, yeah. like two could be it. And you're just right. second guessing yourself. And that's where you get screwed. I think so. It's yeah. funny because me and my sister were actually just talking about this. It was either yesterday or two days ago, very recently. And she asked me, she was like, you don't have your license, right? I was like, no, I don't. And then she asked me, if, if you were to take the test, do you think you would pass it? I looked mm -hmm. at her. I was like. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I was like, to be completely honest, I was like, it's there's not, a lot about real estate nothing, that I... Uh, yeah, exactly. nothing about what you do yeah. today to day. It's exactly. just like how right. to stay out of jail or... Yeah, it's like get, all the regulations and the yeah, policies behind just, it. Yeah. I was like, that practice. stuff I don't know. I was like, I don't know that kind of stuff. That's what we got Stephanie here for. I don't even know that kind of stuff. Yo, well, you, well, after you take it, it kind of goes out, out your mind. Don't admit this, okay? <laughs> you have just people behind you, though, like that have been in it for years and know... Do's yeah. and don'ts. But we both don't use our license. I don't know. Do you still use your license now? I have a deal under contract now. I, hey, I use hey, it. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. But I I will help someone with a deal. Yeah. But I don't actively go looking. Yeah. Right. If something comes to you, be like, as well. I'll take the pictures too. <laughs> <laughs> in house, have everything in house. That's a little, little bonus for marketing. Right. Yeah. That's right. But I so when I got my license, I started with a small little brokerage no one's ever heard of called Equity. Okay. Okay. 
Are and they still here to this day? I have no idea. Oh, okay. the, the the person I worked with was based out of Lebanon. Okay. So in hindsight, were you living in Harrisburg? I just started with someone else. I was living in Har- so when we first moved here, we lived in Harrisburg for a year, mm-hmm. and then we moved to Boiling Springs. We've been okay. Ever since. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. So Boiling Springs to Hershey yeah. every day was a long drive too. That's quite the drive. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so. now, how long did it take you to get your first real estate deal? So. I think I did one in the first year, and I don't. I, it wasn't really my sale. I helped someone, so I just got a little bit of a commission off of that. Yeah, it wasn't really even a referral. I wouldn't call it that either. It was like a JV almost, just a little something like that. A little side quest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so long. Was yeah, like, yeah. And then I went to Remax after that. Mm-hmm. Started to do better, and then I went to the Nidlinger team. Shout out to Rob. Shout out Rob. Yep. Yeah. Um, Very, very. I mean, I learned a lot there. I probably did the most deals under them. Okay. And then from there, I decided to really start growing my real estate photography business. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of this, I wasn't selling a lot of homes. Yeah. I wasn't. I was selling some, but not enough to keep up with the bills. Did you fully quit your other job? Yeah. Oh, no way. I just left. Just, oh, wow. Just one Actually, day. Just, yeah, I just went full force into... Did you close your first deal trust. and then quit? Or did you... No, so I had a 401k at my job. I actually cashed that. Oh, okay. On. Gotcha. And uh, we tried living on credit cards. I don't recommend that. No. But it's, we just did whatever I had to do to right. try to make it work. It's kind of like the typical entrepreneur start. Yeah. It's like, you know, we're going a bunch of money in debt and just hoping for the best. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to... I mean, I, I had to make up, I had to pivot though, because the, the selling the real estate wasn't going well. Yeah. But I, I had this camera from when I started the hammock business. And I said, why don't I just start doing pictures? Yeah. Right? I was going to ask, like, I didn't know if you went to college for videography, photography, if you had certifications or anything. And now you're just a master at it. <laughs> master. <laughs> I believe. Dude, you talk about stuff I've never even heard of. I know. I don't even know this stuff. go through and name every piece of camera equipment possible. like, what is that? (laughs) I I hate hearing. The one thing I hate the most is hearing people say, I can't. And I deal with this too. But I can't because I think you can. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn something, you just find it and learn it. Just like someone saying, I can't be on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, There you go. (laughs) (laughs) But no, like like I'm a can-do person. So if I'm going to start a Real estate photography business. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go research. I'm gonna figure it out. You don't yeah. have to go to school for this stuff. Yeah, you, you don't have to go. Just like real estate, like if you want to become an investor, you don't yeah. need to go get your license first. It's like figure it out. You know, put your mind to it. Exactly. And probably it used YouTube accomplish. as well. Yeah, just YouTube 100. percent I yeah. recently built a, a chicken coop. Oh. I, I watched <laughs> an hour worth of chicken coop videos, and it's yeah. a, and I just went and built it. So yeah, how like many? You have chickens? Yeah, we have five chickens. Now. No way. That's pretty cool. I never knew that. We just got them for Mother's Day. I bought it for my wife because man, I was thinking, does that yeah. go along with like your carnivore diet? So like, yeah, you get fresh eggs. eggs. Yeah. Exactly. I want chickens. Yeah. <laughs> I would think you should. That well, would be cool. Fun. Little side note: um, Nate and Ben had recently started the <laughs> carnivore diet, so they've been keeping me up to date. Ben like, yeah, Ben likes ice cream too much, though. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I would fall off the wagon, but I am committed now. I'm yeah. not having ice cream anymore. There you go. My biggest downfall was my I have two little girls, and they're not strong enough to pull the lid off the ice cream that we allow them to oh, have. So yeah. every time you do it, you just have to take a bite. I uh, did. Yeah, it was right <laughs> there. But in now my this face. podcast is gonna hold you accountable. I, that's right, dude. I'm already making like a video journal to help me keep. Oh, yeah? count. I'm posting videos every day about yeah. it. Yeah, like no, I'm self aware that I will fall off the wagon. So I'm trying <laughs> to tie myself to the wagon. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair. But um yeah. yeah, getting back into to you know photography, so yeah. it just kind of sparked out of nowhere. You're like, right. all right, I'm gonna just start doing real estate photos. Yeah, well, actually, so I actually started when I was in Remax. Uh, one of my very first clients was uh, Tom Shaletnik. Uh, shout out to Tom. He took a, a gamble on me, so he was one of my OG clients. Mm-hmm. Still, we still shoot for him to this day. Um, but you just had to, I had to put myself out there, and I had to ask agents, hey, can I take your listing photos? Yeah, yeah. and and. What was your experience with that? It was scary. Yeah. I completely felt like I had no idea what I was doing because I didn't. And some of my first photos were horrible. Oh, uh, do you still I, have them? I probably could, <laughs> could love dig to them back. up somewhere. I'd love to go back. And Man, I those. started single exposure and I would just like bring, 
highlights, shadows up, and like just do Aww. quick edits. Yeah. yeah. And I was doing the edits on my own. I'm like, this is too much. <laughs> I need to figure out these are not turning out like I wanted to turn them out. Yeah. yeah. Turn out. So I was just a, just play around yeah. with it until you figure it out pretty much. Yeah. Are you it. like cold calling these agents to to market or how are you getting a, going I, to open houses? Or no, what? I first started with just people I knew. Okay. So like I started yeah. the brokerage I was at, mm -hmm. asked around. Then I moved brokerages. Then I got in with the Heather Nylinger team, did their stuff for a while. Um, and I got a lot of practice there. Yeah. That's, kind of, that's kind of the laying the base of what the business is now today. Yeah. That was me laying the foundation, planting the seeds. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we do a lot more than that now. When you got into it, like initially, just with your singular camera, did you ever envision that it would turn into something like this? No. No? Mm -hmm. Did you did you feel like as soon as you started getting into it, did you feel like you had a passion for it? You're like, oh, this is actually something I kind of like did. now. I did enjoy it because mm -hmm. yeah. I've always been artsy, um, and being creative is kind of artsy. Yeah. Now the real estate photography side, we could we could argue back and forth, but it's actually more just business utility. Just trying to make things look there's as bright and of, big as possible. Right. There's and not a lot of and, yeah. There's just yeah. a just a process. We follow the process. Kind of. Right. That kind of sucks. But the, video, video, with but the video we do is, is a lot more creative. We're telling stories through the video yeah. and stuff. And before we get to, like, the video stuff, for someone new that they want to get into real estate photography, like, how did you go about with pricing? And in the beginning, did you say, hey, I'm willing to do your photos for free just so, you know, just build that up? Yeah, I did a lot of free work in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I think you should not be shy of that. Mm -hmm. Um some people will tell you never do that. Some people will say absolutely do it. I think there's a balance there. I think you definitely should to get some recognition, to get some stuff to show people that, hey, I can do this. Yeah. Right. Um, and who doesn't want free photos? Right, exactly. Yeah. So to start out, I would I would definitely go to other people that are in the area doing it. Go to your competition. Go to their website. You can see about pricing. Mm -hmm. um, just is it worth at that price point for you, or do you need to add some dollars? I mean, you know your costs. If you pay an editor, mm -hmm. that's your that's a cost. If you, I mean, you're probably going to start out doing all the appointments on your own. There's that cost. There's the driving costs. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of people don't figure There's that just out. Things they don't take into consideration. Right. I have put almost twenty three thousand miles on my car in a year. Jeez. Just driving around. I yeah. hit. I just hit twenty two thousand. Uh, yeah. On. What day we go to Virginia? Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real estate's it, the same way. Got yeah. it in September. It hasn't even been a year yet. My, oh, I hate that's that. That's a lot. Just the thought of that is actually disgusting. It's a lot. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a yeah. price. Yeah, yeah that's, that, a, that's a cost people don't really think of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. So you started up. You're working your way through it. What's like your startup costs? Like when did you know that I have to get more cameras? I need some more equipment like this? And yeah, obviously it's still a whole learning process for you like as you're going through. And you're still trying to figure out like you know, how to even do it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So bare minimum startup costs would be a camera, a tripod, a good wide lens, and then maybe some software. Okay. So we use software called Aureo. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does all of our scheduling. It does all of our delivery. How about um, when it comes to, like, editing? What software do you use for that? So editing, if I need to edit anything, I use Capture One. Okay. okay. We use now editors that are overseas. Gotcha. The reason we use that is why we're sleeping, they're editing. Mm -hmm. And we can have everything back to our agents next day. Yeah. yeah. So bare minimum, you want to have photos back next day to your agents so they can put them on the MLS. And you just want to be quick to respond. You want to be available. You want to be have a very good availability because a lot of agents need photos quickly. Right. right. And so... And so, so I, you don't need a fancy camera. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars. You can just get a, a AS, APS-C camera, which is a crop sensor, so it's not huge full frame, so it's not expensive. We used a 12-millimeter 12 12 lens on a uh, crop sensor camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's really all you need. Yeah. 12-millimeter crop sensor. Yep. 12-millimeter okay. lens, crop sensor camera, mm -hmm. tripod. Tripod. Okay. We're all Sony shooters here, so <laughs> all right. if you want to stick with a brand. So no Canons and Nikon. No Canons or Nikon. I did have a Nikon. I started out with a Nikon. Yeah. But one of my good buddies, he's from Ukraine. He's a photographer. He's a portrait photographer mainly. Um, he taught me everything I knew about cameras. So he, that was another resource. There was YouTube, and then there was Paul. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so mentor of some sort. Yeah, yeah, some sort of mentor. But he shot Sony, so that's how I got in that Sony ecosystem. Okay. How did you come across him? Uh, we go to church together. Oh, there we go. So yeah. I, that's another reason, like, 
I tell everyone, you need to go to church. It's not only good for your, your soul, like the community, the, the people that are there. You just never know who you're going to meet. Yes. It kind of to reinforce that idea, actually, from our guest two podcasts ago, um, Jeff Allen. That's how he ended up actually raising a majority of the money for that 52 unit deal. It's just people that he met through that's his church. church. And they, they go to oh. the same church. Yeah, we go to, oh, church. Yeah. We go to church together. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a coincidence. See? Yeah. You just I, gotta never go, know. I gotta go to that church. You gotta, <laughs> well, all the businessmen go there. I don't think it's the main reason you should go to church, but I think it's right. uh, it's very right. healthy yep. in a lot of ways. And that's one of the ways. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Now, how did you start building the team? Because you said you had an editor overseas. Was like that the first hire? And then you started hiring more people or? Yeah, yeah. So it was all me, all me until I got the the editor. The editor was the first thing. I had to get that off my plate because anybody who's starting a business like that will know that you can't come home with a hundred photos and condense them down to, you know, 30 deliverable photos or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and have your sanity. Yeah. <laughs> so. I know what you're saying. So kind of this is a, another topic that Stephanie and I had brought up a couple of days ago. Do you think that it's important? For before you delegate a task to a freelancer or just some third party, do you believe it's important to understand that task fully yourself? So, like, you're sending out this editing. Do you think it's important that you understood how to edit first before you send it out to them? I, I, yes, I think you should understand it, but I don't think you need to be a professional. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, have and a decent a professional, and I mean, professional in the way that you're way better than them. Yeah. Or gotcha. you could out edit them. Yeah. Right. I think you need to be able to get by so that. God forbid, like something happens and you have to get something out. You can you can edit yourself. Either that, or if they send some work back, like you kind of have an eye for what you should be looking for yeah. at this point. You can change you. stuff. Exactly. Critique, on your end. You know, teach them. And right. Stuff. That and just like go through and critique it. Yeah. Yeah. But I I don't think you should be the best because I'm trying to find people who are better than me. Right. Of course. Mm -hmm. That those editors are way better than me. Yeah. Higher than. That's another reason. Yeah. Use them. Okay, that makes sense. So how long did it take you to go from like starting to eventually hiring your first hire? So, oh man, that's probably want to say two or three years between two to three years. Okay. And this is 2018 time frame, or I would say so ballpark. I, I honestly tell you the truth. I, I don't know exactly when Megan, my very first photographer I trained has been working with me for almost three years. Oh, wow. Shout out so Megan. I would say, yeah. yeah, she was really my first person I trained. And yeah. That, that was a huge thing. Cause I was getting overwhelmed mm -hmm. and not overwhelmed just with real estate photography, there was other things I was trying to start, like the video side of the business that yeah. I, I just couldn't do both. So I needed to have Megan come in. Okay. And Megan is Jeff Allen's daughter. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> if you saw that episode, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. Nice. So now that you're like, are you still acting as an agent during this time frame? once you bring on your first hire? Or you kind of just, I know you like, you still technically act as an agent every now yeah. and then, but are you, you know, transferring a majority of your energy to the videography and photography? Yeah, this, this is where I start to really let off the real estate. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I always kept my license active because if I have one deal a year, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah. it's it, like a right? bonus. It's a huge bonus. It's yeah. something I get to save. You put some money away. Um, so I, I typically might have one one deal a year Okay. that I do currently. So with that being said and letting go of the agent side of things, but still holding on a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to a point, like if someone wanted to – get into the photography space and be a videographer, what could one expect to make, you know, let's say annually? And oh, I know this word. can range. Well, There's so many different aspects. Kind of along with that question, I was just going to ask, at this point when you were then transitioning over, were your days actually like pretty filled consistently with work that needs done? Not, no, not really. No? Okay. We, on our real estate side, we haven't, since I haven't solely focused on that, it could be a lot busier. We're gonna we're gonna make it a lot busier here coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but well, you guys seem pretty busy all the time. Yeah, I know we can we can't <laughs> even schedule a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but we're trying to what we're trying to do for our business now is build an ecosystem. Yeah. So that we're really tailored to any business, but real estate and specifically, so that they come, we do their real estate content, mm -hmm. then they come into our studio and they're gonna do their social media and branding. Mm. Smart. And. So they can come in here. I'm really, we're really trying to push the podcast thing because you can sit here, you could talk for an hour, and then then you have 20 to 30 shorts to post. Right, right. right. You have highlights of that podcast. It's just super efficient and cost effective for someone that needs 
consistent video. And that's all agents and, you know, investors as well. Branding's everything. So yeah. I know that since creating our social media for Investors Unite, putting out these podcasts and everything, we've had like a tremendous reach across versus what we were before. Because mm-hmm. our SEO, I mean, is, you know, it's not really there, <laughs> right? So yeah. we're doing like all outbound. But now that we have the social media, we not be, might not be generating like, you know, inbound leads that often or anything else. But at least now people have an understanding of who we are. Right. So like anytime that Stephanie or myself or go to like a meetup or something, it's like, oh, like I might have seen them before. There's social media popped up here. Mm -hmm. Even like being out in public, you're getting like recognized now. So it's kind of cool. So you've seen it work. Like, and it's only worked because... You've been getting so high. Yeah, yeah. you're (laughs) consistent. When I'm out out in public and like... I hate to say this because it makes me look like such an alcoholic, but the one time <laughs> at the bar was my very first experience. I was yeah. out there and like least likely place for me to believe that someone would recognize me simply from this. You know, I'm, as soon as I walk in, a guy runs up to me. He's like, Skylar? I was like, <laughs> I looked at him just confused. I was like, yeah, like I've never seen you before. He's like, I watch your podcast every week. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> can I get a photo? <laughs> I swear, I got so excited. I was like, all right, I've never had that feeling before. And it was just so cool to experience. Yeah. I know that Stephanie had a pretty big social media following way before we even ever parted. Yeah. So yeah. you've come across this on, you know, several occasions back then, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I had someone come up to me actually at my uh, nephew soccer game. Was it Sun? It was Sunday. Last Sunday or the previous Sunday. But yeah. Oh, yeah? It's crazy. Do you yeah. still get like hype about it? Do you get excited? I feel, you know, it's just like... Not like a hype feeling, just like Man, I get I'm helping people, you know, yeah, like it's like cool. it's working. Something yeah, working. like yeah. it's, yeah. yeah. People are listening. Right, right. Every, every yeah. person Hopefully I... Hopefully our content's But decent. no, it's great yeah. to meet new people. Like, I love meeting new people, you know? Yeah. I ask everyone, you know Stephanie Kabidi? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like mine? I'm going through and cold yeah. calling agents, like, all the time right now. And if I bring up Stephanie's name, like, most of them are like, oh, right. yeah. Like, I know who See, is. I don't cold call the agents. I just let him do it all. <laughs> I hear you cold call on during the day. Oh, Some yeah. People. Can you hear me? Am I, like, yeah. loud over there? You're calling, like, homeowners, I think. Yeah. yeah. She's calling potential yeah, It's sellers. just a little bit. I, don't, I can't like, really? do everything. But. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> over there screaming. Hey, you, the hey this is Stephanie. Are you, are you want to, looking to sell? Yeah. <laughs> can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. That's okay. That's good. So, yeah, just going back into, yeah. um, do you want to get into numbers? We don't have to. Um, I mean, I don't really know the numbers. That's okay. So what, like a range. Don't, what do you do think a, a range? Well, I just want to know for like what you had already said for the startup costs of you just need that yeah. simple camera. Yeah. I forget the name. 12 millimeter something or other. And then the tripod. Anything else that goes along with that? Or is that about it to start? You could start for probably. How much? What is that like? $1,000, $1,500. Oh, okay. I was okay. going to say two grand. So that's do you good. recommend buying camera equipment used as well? Or just. I, I do. I recommend. Do you? Okay. If you know what you're doing. Is there like if, you, if there's someone that knows cameras and and have them help you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like you can even ask us. Like we have consulted with people before. Like yeah. It's totally fine. I my very first Sony camera I bought used. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not gonna put out any information, but you just recently had a, a client or somebody that you used to work with come in and ask you to help you sell a bunch of his camera equipment, right. which is obviously all used. Yeah. So yeah. you think there's still a pretty good market for you know used equipment there, like that? There is. And we've gotten some killer deals on cameras okay awesome Awesome use cameras because we so i provide for my photographers i provide their camera oh nice tripod and yeah so that's for like facebook marketplace majority of the time yeah 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 local the better okay because then you can meet them in person you're not right you can examine the camera before you buy it yeah send the money online and hope for the best Less likely to be scammed (laughs) right and i know a while ago we you had me film in here. You're like, give it a try just to yeah. see how it is and just do kind of like one-on-one content with the camera mm-hmm. and basically asking like, what is a brand? So since I already kind of did my portion of it, I want to hear like your portion of like, what is a brand and like, why is it important? What's a brand? Well, I think it's others' perception of you, right? In, the, in reality, that's your brand. Yeah. So if I, if I hear the word, the name Skylar, who am I thinking of? Or what do I think of of Skylar? That's right. That's really your brand. Mm-hmm. It's your character. So like, some people's brand is like they're set, they're dropping f bombs every day. So it's what uh, what's his Gary V? Yeah. yeah, that's part of his brand, right? It right. is. Just He's in your face. His wild speech. Yeah. So when I think of yeah. Gary V, I think of that. Yeah. That's okay. A brand. Just fast talking, crazy I think words. Of wine and marketing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's how he started. Okay. Um, but. 
is when important. When I think of Stephanie, oh sure, Go her ahead. brand, oh, uh, just flame me. Go ahead. <laughs> I didn't say anything about no, your like, brand. Yeah, yeah. Like it's I, on the hat. I think no of way. like like a like a God fearing person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're you're really outspoken about your faith, which is awesome. Appreciate it. And buys houses. She wants she wants to buy your house. Stephanie buys house. She does. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Like trustworthy. Sell your house, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie will buy. So, it. Yeah. I don't know. That, if, I don't know if that answers your question. No, it, it does. does. But how yeah. is that important? You think? Well, it's extremely important because who you work with matters and how you're perceived matters. Okay. Yeah. And it, de- it really depends who you're trying to reach, right? Right. It's like Stephanie's trying to reach a majority of people because majority of people are homeowners. Right, right. So she's very personable. Mm-hmm. Gary V is trying to reach the business person that is like... Like the beginner entrepreneur. Fire, like, yeah, like... like fire him yeah, up a little like, bit. Yeah, yeah, so he's really energetic and... Okay. It's all about so your matters. target audience. You know. Yeah. Do you have, is there a brand that you kind of like idolize over others? Like, and it could be a person, it could be really just a physical brand, but something that like you think resonates more with you. And like, is there a reason for that? Well, I don't know, kind of be cliche, but Chick-fil-A always stands out to me. Yeah. Because how many restaurants do you go to and they're like, eh, next? I know. You want yeah. The, you know, like this customer service is horrible, but I go to Chick Fil A and it's always buzzing. There's always people there. They yeah. always smile. My pleasure. Usually, my pleasure. Mm-hmm. So their brand is kind of manners, and you know that they're faith because they're closed yeah. on Sundays, right? And quality food. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I don't know about quality. Oh well, okay. The food. It tastes good. good. Yeah. It's not like amazing. <laughs> I, I I think. No, the food tastes it's, good, but that's the not quality. What I, think. I don't think of food when I think of Chick Fil A. I think of the the customer service. Yeah. No, I agree. That's their brain. So that's a whole nother topic with quality. <laughs> I think of food. <laughs> no, I agree. The Customer waffle service fries are good. Sure. Yeah, they're good. I and like their, the ranch is good. Like the ranch is fire. I like their uh, their fruit cups actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of retarded, but you know. it's, it's now, a little child. No. Yeah. I want to talk about. Um, we talked about the photography side of things, mm-hmm. but let's get into the podcasting. Okay. And you recently hired someone new, Ben. So ben is on the team now. What up, Shout ben? Out to ben? That, What's up, guys? That was a huge answer to prayer because I was literally. We oh. opened this studio in January. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was just me, Megan. I've had trained. I've had other photographers. We train them, but we kind of condensed it to just me and Megan. Yeah, just for several reasons. And then we opened this podcast in January. Thank you. Thank you. I, I came to Stephanie about the idea of partnering, and because I know you guys do a lot of, a lot of content. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we got so busy during the spring. I was like, I need to like try to look for someone. I've been wanting to look for someone, so I put a feeler out in on Facebook. And not wasn't thinking of anything. wasn't gonna, Nothing was gonna happen. And then one day, Ben just texted me, "Hey, I heard you're looking for." Or Brittany, his wife, told me that you're looking for someone. And can I come check out the studio? I said, "Yeah, come check out the studio, please." And so he came down. And did you know Ben prior to this, or was he a complete stranger? I knew of him and I met him a couple times, but we didn't know each other well. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. What is it? Was it a week later, Ben, that you had your? Your desk in here? Yeah, he moved yeah. in pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. So so I came in, I saw the studio, and, like, I had just, like, admired everything that was going on here and everything yeah. that Nate was building. And, uh, like, there was just multiple facets, and I was like, that's what I need. Like, I, I've been a creative person my entire adult life. So I was in the music industry for 12 years, and we, we decided to step away from touring, and I needed something else to do to fill my time. I called right. Nate. I was like, Hey, I just called him to let him know I was available. Yeah. And when I came here and saw everything, I was blown away. I was like, this is, this is the place that I believe that I need to be. Mm-hmm. And Nate was like, I think I that you should be here as well. And like within a week I had a desk and it was butted up right <laughs> next to Nate's. And we were just like, you know, like how do we grow this Becoming thing? Becoming best friends. How do yeah. we, t- yeah. Right. We're, we're doing karate in the garage for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, and then we were just like, you know, like, how do we grow this thing Mm -hmm. bigger than we ever thought it could be? And it just, it's something that, you know, I've been here for what, maybe two months, maybe, Nate? It felt so much longer than that. Yeah, less than that. Yeah, it feels so much longer. So, uh, but I want to tell people that are listening, like, this studio didn't happen in a day. It didn't happen in a week. This has been four to five years of me, like, 
busting my butt off and then saving some money and then buying a piece of gear. I did not buy all this gear. Like I actually slowly developed yeah. it and got slowly it. bought yeah. things throughout the years. Because this stuff is not cheap. It's it's not no. cheap. It's a lot of money for everything you have. Yeah, yeah we have it's crazy. We have several cameras and all the stuff that goes with a camera, the lenses, the the lights, everything, the mics, the audio, the yeah. lights. Yeah. Like, we're so, it's like a even TV just the production. setups themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, tables, chairs. So you can do it. Just you gotta work hard at it. It doesn't happen time. overnight. Yeah. And this definitely didn't happen overnight. And I mean, like, we started without even, you know, you filming our stuff. Like, if you guys even see, like, in our previous videos, in our first podcast episode, the audio is horrible. There's literally oh a fish tank, like, sound <laughs> in the bag of the water. Like, our voices are crackly. The, just the video Quality is was, so bad. Yeah, it was terrible. And the first time we filmed with you, Nate. We were like, no way. This is like a TV production. Like it, it was way better, right? But I actually just went back to watch that video. Not mm -hmm. the one on the uh, the Airbnb where we did it outside, but the one with uh, Isaiah and David. Okay. I yeah. went back and just watched that yesterday. And even the quality then versus now right. is actually 10 times better yeah. now than it was then. Yeah. I was like, Getting I thought upgrade. that was really good. It just keeps getting better. It just, yeah, honestly. So awesome. Can't wait for, you know, another yeah, thanks, man. 20 it's, episodes or so. It's loving be, shooting with you guys. Yeah. So I can even talk to that for a little bit. When I got serious about the podcasting service, I'm like, because I, in my head, I'm like, I need to really push a service for podcast, video podcasting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when we had, I had the Airbnb and I asked a bunch of people to come by and yeah. just shot at Airbnb. It was a pretty cool Airbnb. Cool. That too. was really cool, but it wasn't, it wasn't as, as a success as I thought it was going to be. And I spent a lot of money. I was going to say, it's probably <laughs> not that cost effective. It wasn't cost effective. So yeah. I reached out to, uh, my friends at Keller Williams uh, in Enola, mm -hmm. Central PA, and uh, they said, "Yeah, you can use our training room." Mm -hmm. So I so I started using their training room, and that's where we sh had shot those I don't know few episodes with you guys. Yeah, yeah. and then we graduated from there to the studio. Here. We're growing yeah. up, and we're all growing up. We're <laughs> Yeah, where I almost feel, I told Ben the other day or today, I'm like, I feel like we're almost outgrowing this. He's like, "No, we're not." <laughs> no, I feel like ben it is like, fast though, because uh, yeah. like. I feel like we already need more room. Well, especially well, you guys more so need That's a more lot of room. Stuff. Yeah. We're just in our little cubby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm all good back here. Yeah. yeah. As long as we still got the ping pong table up, you know. I'm yeah. Happy. That we that was one of the first things we bought. I remember that your dad picked it up. Yeah, it almost yeah. fell Shout out, out of the dad. truck. It was that. when we were driving it over. It was yeah. winter time, but it was Goodness. good. Thank and who we had a guest here waiting. And we were it was like, Rob. Was I felt it Rob? so bad. <laughs> so I was Rob, like er, stop Eric. Him. No, it was was it Eric? No, no, Rob, you get no. Rob that was Mallinger. a different time, because we had Rob. Oh, we did have him. It was wait. Eric. Yeah, that was that was two different times. But for the uh, for the ping Brewer. pong, it was Rob. It was Rob, and you okay. you were doing some podcasting with him before or something. Oh yeah, I forgot. I shot a little footage with Rob before. Yeah, we did ours. Yeah, but no, it all worked out. Oh, yeah. speaking of which, we're having his little oh yeah his little buddy. I guess you could say on next week. Who's who's his who's little buddy? buddy? Meg. Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So I think I'm looking forward to that episode too. His little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> She's in every little clip he has. Yeah. Like, She's the hustler for him for sure. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Project manager, I think, is her title. Yeah. She does, she does a lot of like her own stuff too, though. Yeah. So we'll She's dive got a lot deep. of rentals. Yeah, we'll dive deep with her, see awesome. how that goes. I do yeah. want to talk about consistency too. Yeah. So how important do you think that is for someone that let's say a new person's coming in to start their podcast, they think they're gonna be a hit overnight. How important is being consistent? Oh, it's extremely important. Um, if you're not consistent, then I mean, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. If you're so people need to be on a schedule. You know, like I don't know, you know have kids, but if you don't keep if you don't keep your kids on a schedule, things get messed up. So if you don't keep your what you're doing on social media on a schedule consistent, mm -hmm. people are going to be like, what's going up? I was looking for my episode Monday. They didn't release one. Mm -hmm. I was looking for this. like, And they're going to just, their attention's going to go somewhere else. Right. That's true. And there's a statistic so. I was watching with Alex Ramosi. I don't remember the exact number, but roughly what he said is to be in the top 10% of all podcasts that have ever been released, all you have to do is post more than... 20 episodes consistently at least once a week because mm -hmm. most people they get to like number five ten whatnot they're like missing a week here and there already mm -hmm. and then you're gonna lose all your exactly. listeners because it's just yeah. like oh i didn't have my podcast today i'll go find someone else's right yeah and even to go along with that like it's not every week that stephanie and i we have a guest lined up or like oh we know who's coming next week or the following week after it's like 
shoot, sometimes what are we going to do? Yeah. And it comes down to it. Me and Stephanie, we have to release something. So it's like, mm-hmm. all right, Steph, yeah. let's sit down in these chairs and talk about what we're doing. Anything yeah. and everything. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely anything. Yeah. Usually I can ramble off on some kind of story for a little while, which hopefully y'all, are, y'all like or <laughs> is entertaining. <laughs> I don't a story know. <laughs> about the day Nathan beat me in ping pong. Not <laughs> yet. Well, no, there's, well, I there, there, there was. <laughs> no, there was actually. You did. One day you messed I me up. I think you were t- off. Yeah. You must have had a couple of Coronas or something. Yeah. I wish. Probably needed it. <laughs> <laughs> no. He hates my drink. No. <laughs> Listen, I slowed Get down. Some sparkling water. I slowed down on the drinking, to be honest. Well, well, good. I hope you slow down. Down, down. Oh, slow it, down, down. If down, I down. beat you, best two out of three. And what? No drinking for a month. And what? And see how you feel. And ping pong? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> if, I, if I do it, and, and Nate. That's about Nate. tennis. Aren't you a tennis player? Oh, I could do ten. I haven't played in so long though. But you could still beat him. Pickleball. You need you need to lower the level. What about pickleball? Uh, guys, I'm just. Are you good at, at pickleball? But we could do this right. We could literally do this right after the podcast. Okay. I'm just a fucking athlete. Like I hate to say it. So let me right. in any sport. Let's do this out crazy. of two out of three. So I go against you. Nate goes against you. Ben goes against you. In pickleball? No, in, in ping pong. Oh, if yeah, two of fine. us win, like two of us out of the three mm-hmm. against you. Then no drinking for right. for a month, it. and then Let's you see it. how you feel. I think we can that's do a it. good challenge. We can sure. do it. Yeah, yeah. All <laughs> I'm right. down. Going sober. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we touched about basically everything. What would you oh. say? Oh, go ahead. Oh, there's a lot. There's well, a lot. I, I wanted to build yeah. into like more of the connections actually, because I sure. think so. Obviously, you're doing videography, photography, and it's all kind of towards real estate. You do have other stuff, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. but. In real estate alone, I know I don't know about you specifically, but I know Ben is looking to get into investing here soon. Mm-hmm. And do you believe that, like, by just going through meeting all these realtors in the beginning, kind of understanding the community a little bit more and shooting photos for them, that you've built a pretty good network within the community? If you wanted to start investing, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, it's all about networking, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, like maybe who you might go to to kind of learn a certain niche or something, or maybe to go find a possible deal. I've heard all this stuff under the sun because we yeah. sit in the podcast. That's what I'm listen, thinking, right? We, you have the perfect job, man. I, he does. I see. I see. Okay, I tell people I hear all the drama, and I keep all the drama behind closed doors just to yeah. tell everyone, just let everyone know. But yeah. I know all the stuff that goes on in the industry because we know people from all different brokerages, all different invest investing businesses, um, mortgage businesses. Like we work with them all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We I get this, you know bird's eye view of the industry that's pretty cool and it would be easy to just jump on something right Um, i never really thought of it that way like obviously like building connections but kind of you understand actually everything you understand i understand this business this business that business and they're all competitors but then there's there's putting it in action true i do want to invest in real estate but all my investment has been in this business yeah my time my energy my money i mean it's paying off for you so yeah i hope so (laughs) i think it is yeah, you're doing really sure. well. Thank you. How often do you have podcasts now coming in here? Like, several, it, several times a week. We were supposed to have one today. They canceled, so it okay. kind of opened up our schedule. Then we had yours today. Yeah, we had Eric. We had one with Erica Rawls yesterday. Gotcha. On location. So yeah, that was fun. Cool. So, yeah. what is your favorite part of the business? Like, what do you my, enjoy doing most? My favorite part of the business is our nonprofit work. Hmm. Oh, do you want to yeah. touch on Dubai? I was going to Dubai. Say, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I recently, my, my recent trip, I went to Dubai. Um, we work mainly with faith, faith-based organizations. And, uh, went out there with an organization called Nomads. Mm. They minister to people in labor camps, mostly men in, in the labor camps. So if you don't know, the UAE and other Persian Gulf countries, they have these camps that from people from all around the world will come to. They have to live there, but then they'll work inside the country. Mm-hmm. For little to no money, and then they send those those monies back to their families. But in the meanwhile, they're kind of living in these uh, very small quarters, just like, really not good living conditions. Yeah, yeah. and they uh, their ministry is really to the church that is that is there. So there's mm-hmm. there's there's people that that have faith, they know Jesus, and they need a place to worship. So they have Bible studies and stuff like that. That's awesome. So and what I we- got. Oh, go ahead. I got to just kind of record that. Oh, okay. I love. I go take my camera, and it's yeah. documentary style. Yeah. 
that is my favorite thing to do, just documenting the things that are going on. That sounds really cool. And just yeah. being able to travel like that, it's just a great opportunity. It's really yeah. nice. We, yeah. we work with all kinds of nonprofits. So we uh, Human trafficking, so anti-human trafficking. Um, we work with Radiant Hope here. Um, so they work with cancer patients and minister to them and a bunch of other yeah. things. So it's really if I could only, if I could do one thing that we do in our business, that would be it. Okay. Now what's the thing you don't want to do? <laughs> Editing. <laughs> I I can edit video and I, and I do enjoy it to a point, but doing it for, for like work mm-hmm. that I, I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. I, um, it's not my thing. I don't blame you. Everyone's <laughs> got some part of the business they don't enjoy. That's yeah. where you delegate it. Yeah. Thanks yeah. Ben. <laughs> uh, I was gonna ask you, Ben. Same question. What's your favorite part of working here? Uh, so far, it's just been uh, the the potential and the excitement of the future. Like, there's so much to build. There's so much mm-hmm. for tomorrow. Yeah. So, like, this business and this line of work, we make connections with people. We're growing something. So, like, when my alarm go- clock goes off in the morning, my head bounces off the pillow. And I'm, like, ready to come in and, like, figure stuff out. And, like, running a business is really hard. Yeah. And scaling a business is really hard. That's – I love that challenge. Yeah. It's like, dude, does anybody really exactly know what they're doing? No. <laughs> you figure that stuff out. Yeah. And, like, Nate – one thing that Nate said when I first started working here that I still, like, I believe it wholeheartedly is, like, when you're running a business, you are just a problem solver right. all the time. And like, I love solving problems you and like, like puzzles? You know, yeah, puzzles, like all that stuff. So like, it's just a, it's such an intense, fun challenge to me. And like, I've had video experience and photography experience. So like, it just perfectly fit. Like, yeah. I like to edit videos because I love building stories Yeah. and Nate, Nate, it's not Nate's thing. So like, I do my best to take all that stuff off of Nate's plate and you know, meanwhile, we're playing this business Jenga and the tower's getting higher and higher. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and you know what's crazy? <laughs> she got that solid foundation. <laughs> Do you get like that? I don't know if it's like a social media high or like just get excited after each post you make because you honestly don't know which one's going to go viral. Absolutely. You're like, this could be it. This could be it. So it just gets more exciting well, to keep posting. You did have a pretty viral post recently. <laughs> Do you want to touch base on that? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So like, yeah, to what Stephanie's saying, like, yeah, I get excited when we post things mm-hmm. uh, because you just never know. Like, the amount of potential gain that you can get from just people knowing you, liking you, and trusting you yeah. through video is is huge. So, like, I get so excited when I'm like, I think this one's going to do really well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yes, my I do another project. I'm in a, I was in the music industry for 12 years. I still am. I play in a band called the Small Town Titans, and we've recently had a lot of success on the internet with um, silly but on-brand videos. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we're a rock and roll band, so we take household products. Each household product has a barcode on it, and those that barcode has numbers. A guitar tab is a way to read music using numbers. We take those numbers and write a song using the music of numbers that's written on the barcode. Super and easy. people, we post the video, and people have been loving it. And like, yeah, when we post one of those videos, I'm like, this one's getting a million. Yeah. Like, heck yeah. Like, and then then it's like, you check it. First thing when you wake up in the morning, you like, how, how, how well did it do? And then when it flops, then it's like, dang, but it's back to the drawing board. And then you get hype again. (laughs) Right. right. You just do it all over again. And then you you get one that blows up and you just had one that Logan Paul, what did he retweeted it or something? Right. Yeah. So one of the products that we, that we made a guitar riff out of was prime ice pop flavor mm-hmm. okay. and he saw it retweeted it and was like should i make this my walkout song it's insane For his and, wwe stuff yeah That's yeah so cool. and, and like it we just found out that like a lot of people hate his walkout song and we're like oh that would be super cool yeah if he reached out to us and we actually did that yeah um i don't know that it will ever happen but like you never know balls balls in logan paul's court yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ben will never say this, but that was all his idea too. Ooh. Right? The riff? Yeah, yeah. Oh, with yeah. the prime bottle? Or well, with the just, riff just in the general? Riff series, the, 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 the concept of it. So yeah. like when when I sat down and thought about how can I how can I create something that's going to blow my business up? Yeah. And music is a business. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh and you just you have to make something 
engaging. Mm -hmm. It has to be easy to create and it has to be vastly repeatable. Right. Meaning like you can just knock them out. And like I sat down and I thought about that for a long time and I, I um, saw somebody else. I drew inspiration from somebody else who was making guitar riffs off of like random stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what about like something that's more repeatable? Barcodes. Yeah. And I just, you know, you just sit down and think sometimes. It's like a, you have a clarity break. Mm -hmm. You just sit down and think and then – It'll come to you, and we started doing it, and the and we were lucky because the very first one we did exploded. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So then we had the proof of concept right away. We didn't have the um, the consistency barrier that like, oh, we need to do this for a year before it catches on. Right. Like we were like super lucky. We did Heinz tomato ketchup, and it got like two million views overnight. That's wow. Something. And we were like, okay, uh, we what else something. can we do? Then we started batch recording. We got yeah. months out in like stuff to release. We release every week. So. Wow. Yeah. Now. Killing it. Yeah. Now we got to figure out how to make something other than that work. Mm -hmm. So that's the new So now challenge. you kind of already built your brand up a little bit. By we're finding, the barcode guys now. We're the mm -hmm. barcode guys. <laughs> yeah. And now you just have to, you already have a solid foundation. So now you can just scale based off of that. Exactly. Oh, yep. That's awesome. That is Super neat. unique too. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a lot really of fun. Cool. What about, in, what is something in real estate we could do that's similar? Let's strategize oh, yeah. on camera here. We addresses. Could. You do addresses plus zip There's code. numbers there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, if, you, if you wanted, if music was on. You throw, <laughs> yeah. Because you record the house, you'll throw the music in the background. Oh, wait. Uh, that would be cool. <laughs> that would look at this. <laughs> right? Yeah. There you what go. does this address sound like if it was a metal song? And you just, yeah. Yeah, we just do the, have the metal price. song, spin right. back to the house, go back to you, back yeah. to the house. There Dude, you yeah. That, you know what? That's a good idea because what if you had like 1508 Main Street? Yeah. Yeah. You would just make the riff, the, the song be 1508. Mm -hmm. And then you just have somebody singing the name of the street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or like show up, like, this, this is the kitchen. <laughs> well, a week from now, we're going to see a YouTube channel. Wait, you guys should actually do that. I want to see how it We goes. should. That would be sick. That'd be cool. Yeah, we could try it out with some of our properties, see how it goes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I got I to gotta get my real estate license and start doing tours like that there like that go. that would be that my goes. brand of, if i did have my real estate license that would be the perfect on brand thing for they would me they would I'm ask you like what makes you stand out from the rest of the realtors and then you just literally <laughs> just <comes> <laughs> the screaming. whole band comes in <laughs> yeah could you like, imagine guys <laughs> could you imagine me like trying to sell myself to a to a home somebody who's selling their house would be like well is mm -hmm. the other agent are they gonna are riff they gonna your home i know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are they gonna make a guitar riff out of your house yeah <laughs> No, that's awesome. Yeah, that's kind of neat. So, so what's your goals like for for this year, for the next couple of years? Well, we set a goal at a 10x. Um, that was just kind of an overachieving goal. Like, okay, if we don't, we hit somewhere under that, we're still good. I would definitely like to double the business at least by the, the end of the year. Mm -hmm. 10x, anything specifically? Like parts of the business? Just, just I guess, the overall revenue. Revenue okay. of the business. Okay. We really want to do for the photog real estate photography side. Um, we want to do at least 100 appointments a month. We That's get really that. good. That is good. Yeah. And do you have a goal for how many employees you'll need to do that? Probably. We could probably do that with two photographers. Really? Oh, wow. Truth. Okay. Yeah. Full time, yeah. Full time photographers. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so. Nate, we truly appreciate yeah, you coming thanks. on the podcast. That was awesome. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. He said, okay. There was good. so much to talk to. I was like, it was hard to get it. Yeah. So, out, but yeah. Thanks we're going to end it there. We're, if you guys want to film a podcast, we'll make sure to leave Nate's information down below so you guys Absolutely. can, you know, come here, shoot here in the podcast we're filming at. Even if you have any camera questions, video questions, editing questions that might yep. get done, yep. but, yep. you know. Or need any real estate photography done. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. We'll make sure to have all his information awesome. down below. And make sure you guys go subscribe if you're not subscribed. But with that being said, oh. we'll catch you guys. Sorry, we just said 750 today, so keep going. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Almost oh, at a thousand. And with that being said, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.